let's assume that there is going to be some sort of regulation of stable coins. How much of this is related to an eventual central bank digital currency play by the US government? Are they essentially clearing the field for their own competitor? Or are they really concerned that the, these assets won't keep their pegs and that US consumers using these products are going to be hurt? Is this, a, is this a really kind of plowing the field so it's fertile for a US digital dollar? Or is this really about protecting consumers here? You know, I think that the central bank central banks have always had the ability to create their own uh, cryptocurrency. And the more they learn about it, the more they may want to. But that doesn't mean that there's still not a place for privately created and issued stable coins. And they should, you know, watch the industry. And if they want to, you know, come and play, they can. But they shouldn't try to keep everyone else off the field. So you've heard us over and over talk about how various regulators think about these assets differently. If you like to read about law the way that I do, you can find a case that says that Bitcoin is money. You can read tax guidance that says that Bitcoin is property. You can read the CEA and you'll be sure that Bitcoin is a commodity. And if you ask the former chairman of the SEC, they all look like securities to him. We've talked about how stable coins potentially could be regulated by justice, by the CFTC, by the SEC, and by bank regulators. Our assets are confusing to the government because they don't look like, smell like, or act like traditionally issued by financial institutions and actors in the financial markets. This can create some serious headaches for users and businesses that use these assets. Is the US doing this right? Is there anywhere that's doing it better? I think a lot of the regulators um, around the globe are doing a, a better job and they're able to do it because in certain countries that have recently, like within the last few years, created regulatory frameworks, they've done it from one particular regulator. And so the, the regulator in certain countries like, you know, Singapore, Abu Dhabi, they, they develop a comprehensive regulatory framework that looks at the character of the asset and how the asset is used. And I think that works very well in places that don't have so many different regulators. But here in the US, unless they come together and unless Congress creates, we're going to see some hesitancy, I think, from the mainstream financial institution and from some, some you know, crypto companies. Wherever there's uncertainty, companies are going to be hesitant to, to jump into the market. And unless we in the US uh, develop more comprehensive uh, and clear regulatory guidance, we might see uh, more companies doing more active business in, in other countries. And that would never be a good thing for the US. Um, I, wanna, I wanna add, I've been speaking at this conference since 2015, and every single time we have the question and the same answer, which is, in the US, we have several federal regulators that want to claim this as their turf. We have all the states, many of whom decide to claim it as their turf. Um, and that is what makes it so difficult to comply, on top of the fact that the regulation that's out there isn't clear or clearly applicable. Uh, and so therefore, absolutely, I would concur that this is not the best place to have a crypto. Yeah, we were super, super supportive of regulation. We work with the regulators, but Right now, I mean, it is a learning curve for the regulators here in the U.S., but, you know, securities laws that were put in place 80 years ago, like before computers were, were, were made, it's not really applicable to today's, you know, uh, crypto economy. Uh, so I think, I think there's a lot of work to do. I do think there are other jurisdictions where it makes it easier for crypto firms to operate and, and do business. Um, but again, I think we need to modernize our, uh, our securities um, laws. So how do we make that happen? Campaign donations. <laughs> I, I, think, I think Jeff brought his checkbook with him. If anybody's raising, might want to hit him up. I don't, no, but seriously, how do, we, how do we make this happen? <laughs> how, do we, how do we start to push for change? So, so I sometimes think about this as, a, as prenuptial agreements. You kind of have to get into the details. And, and the details in this particular situation 
is that you know, we're, we're, we're measuring things against the Howey test, against the Reeves test. We're, sort of, we're, we're using almost antiqui an antiquated constructs and concepts that don't quite apply to virtual assets in this particular asset class. And, and a very you know, initial place to start will be to modernize those and get into the details of the prenuptial agreement so that we can actually tackle it. And I think you know, if, if we come together with sort of a task force and advisory council that just quickly demolishes the operational of, of, of definitions that, that could either go very well or bring us back to donations and, and bribery. So Jeff's running for office, I think. <laughs> so, so nobody got the correct answer. The correct answer is vote. In the United States, we get the chance to select our government. If you think that this is an issue that matters to you, talk to your representatives that are running. Let them know it's important to you as a voter, you as an employer, you as an important part of the economy. Vote. You are voting for the people who make decisions that affect your life.